neutralizing. Hang out with you, young. Madame Farazan. There's still a long road ahead. Where are we going now? We're going to retrieve the last missing component. My working theory is that the director listed on the sign has it. Ah, no detail slips by our general. Director is a kind of job. The one we're looking for is named Zosimos. Zosimos is responsible for managing everything that happens on the stage, similar to how Idea is responsible for managing the whole realm. Wow! Sounds like Miss Idea must be way busier. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Care to comment on that at all, Idea? Ah. Director doesn't get out much. He's almost always cooped up in his treehouse making props or writing scripts. But I'm trying to remember now. Where is that treehouse of his? Huh? You don't remember? Hey, don't forget! I'm just the mascot. <laughs> I believe it's that way. Huh. Though he might prefer to be alone. Given he often has to move stage props, I suspect that he lives near the theater, and having a view of the entire stage would be useful when imagining a production's actual stage flow. Though if I were him, I'd probably pick a treehouse over there. But how do you know which direction the theater is in? Ah, oh, simple. The overall like- Oh, good point! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Where did that blasted automation mechanism go? Huh? The male actor standees are here, but where are the female ones? Hmm? Uh, uh, who's that? Idea? Yes, Sosimos! Tis I, Idea! How's that for a dramatic entrance? This is a surprise. I was sure you'd be... Curled up in a fetal position crying to yourself? Wow, what a fascinating little creature. Did you just read my mind? The name's Paimon? And no, Paimon's no my 
mind reader. Just call it an educated guess. <laughs> it seems everyone shares a similar opinion about you, Adia. I knew from the start that a managerial role wasn't for me. But I found my true calling now. As a mascot! Mascot? Is that a new role? I don't remember casting you for that. Okay, enough about me. I'm just here to introduce you to some new friends of mine. And that's why we came to see you. Well, do you have the component that fell out of the central hub? I do. However, uh, I'm afraid the incident has caused many malfunctions with the stage mechanisms, and I can no longer put on any performances. Okay, so you're holding the component ransom till we help you fix the mechanisms, huh? No, till we fix the stage, surely. Uh, I'd have thought he wants us to make some more props, no? Given that some of the standees are missing. Or maybe the component is broken, and we need to fix it. You're all forgetting that the majority of his work involves writing scripts. I'll wager that he wants us to edit them. Uh, what has gotten into you all? What sort of person do you take me for, hmm? The component is safe and sound. I can give it to you now if you'd like. Although I was hoping that mm, maybe you might be willing to... Help rescue my show? You're a big group. I have lots of roles to fill. It would really speed up the casting. A show? <laughs> that sounds fun! I want to help! Can we? Can we? Also, truth be told, I've hit a bit of a roadblock in my script and was just thinking about how to move the story forward. And then you all showed up. Suddenly, I got my muse back. I don't know how to explain it, but something about seeing all of you finally helped me figure out how to continue my script. Huh? You mean that story you've been stuck on forever? Are you serious? You really think you can finish it now? Yes, really. Just give me a little time, and I'll write it all up. In the meantime, I'll leave things to you, Idea. Whoa. And he's off to write the script. <sighs> Zosimos has always wanted to write an epic story about a thief and a mage. Apparently, he got the idea from some rumors that were swirling around, but he only got as far as writing the intro before writer's block set in. Why don't you all take some time for yourselves while I see what I can do? We'll reconvene after the director finishes the script. A director, my friends, is a storyteller. And the key ingredient to every good story is inspiration. The moment I laid eyes on General Sangonomiya, inspiration hit me for a brand new character. The heroine was the missing piece of the puzzle. The rest of the story flowed naturally from there, and now it's finished. So please, take a look through your scripts, and we will tell this story together. Well, is everything clear? Uh, Director Zosimos, how do you pronounce this word? Let me see. Ah, uh, that's sojourn. It means to stay for a while. This is a very cute moment, so let's make sure that comes through in the performance. Oh, wait. There's another word I don't know here. It's okay, Klee. We can go through your lines together a few more times after this meeting's over. That would be most appreciated, Kaya. I had a feeling about you, actually. You seem to know a thing or two about character acting. Tell me, have you acted before? <laughs> You're too kind. It's all in the script, really. It just rolls off the tongue. Oh, you think so? Well, you definitely have a knack for it. I've actually been looking out for someone with your talent. If I make it as a big-time director, then I can see us working together for the long term. Be sure to stay in touch, okay? You and I are gonna go places. What can I say? Sounds good to me. Great. Fantastic. Uh, now then, please go through your scripts one more time. 
But don't just read the words. Remember my notes and really let the character inhabit you. I need if you need me for anything, I'll be in the big theater right in the center of this area. Hmm. Wonder what the theaters are like here. Let's go check it out while everyone's still getting ready. from this world? Where did it go? I put it right here. Hey, Zosimos! What you up to? Oh, it's you two. Please, come here. Feast your eyes on this stage. I designed it myself. So, directors have to design the stage too? Oh, <laughs> I'm no ordinary director. I take a more holistic approach. Directing, script writing, stage design, I do it all. Sounds like a lot of work. Idea wouldn't be able to handle that kind of job. Idea has her work cut out for her too, you know. She's my one and only member of the audience. Though she often criticizes my shows. Well, she just says what she thinks. You don't know how to write or this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's because I use preprints in a way that she feels goes against what they're intended for. But even though she's my harshest critic, she's also been my biggest supporter in a lot of ways. I guess you could say she's like my agent. I'm very grateful to her. I've always dreamed of being a director, but I've never had the chance until I came here. So, what did you do before you came here? Like I said, I dreamed. <laughs> From a young age, every time I came home after a show, I'd go over the story again and again in my mind. Growing up, my biggest aspiration was to be a director. Unfortunately, I couldn't offer much beyond my practical skills. So I ended up spending most of my time as a prop designer and doing a bit of set design on the side. It, don't get me wrong, I do love building the set. But nothing satisfies me more than putting on my very own show. No wonder you only wrote director on the sign. <laughs> exactly. You're not doing a great job of convincing me that you're not a mind reader. By the way, could I ask you for your help with something? I'm having trouble finding the master script, and I'll need it shortly. The one you only just finished writing? You lost it already? Yeah. After I handed everyone their copies, I held on to my master copy while I was checking on everything around the theater. I must have dropped it somewhere. If it's not here, then it might be in the attic. These are the only two places I've been since I finished writing it. But, ugh, I still have some things to do to get the stage ready. Would you two mind having a look for me? No problem, we'll find it. Looks like the 
water droplet has been managing them for the director. Hmm. Most of them look like works in progress. Ah, <sighs> then it should be the one that's finished. Okay, let's look for the thickest one and then check the ending. This is the only script that fits the bill. Plus, it looks pretty new. This must be the master script. Let's go give it to Director Zosimos. Zosimos, we got your script. Ah, thank you. That's a huge help. Ah, uh, I'm running out of time here. There's no way I'll be able to fix everything up perfectly. We may just have to wing it. Anyway, the stage is secondary. The performance is what really matters. Things can always go wrong on stage. But as long as the show goes on, it should be fine. You don't sound very confident in what you're saying. It's true. I realize now that a show is the art of the unknown. Even if you have the same actors performing on the same stage, the performance will be slightly different every time. Those subtle differences are what make each performance special. Uh, okay. One last request. Traveler, you can enter the preprints, yes? The truth is that my sets are composed entirely of preprints. First, I use materials to make the objects. Then I take those objects and turn them into the preprint. Now, of course, preprints are really meant for making objects to furnish the domain. So using objects to create preprints is, strictly speaking, the reverse of what this is intended for. But Idea said that if this is what I really want to do, she's not going to stand in my way. Ah, so that's what you meant earlier. Okay, well, what do you need us to do? I'd like the Traveler to go into the preprint set and help move props around during the performance. The reason is... Um... Uh... <laughs> gets it now. If you're busy directing, moving the props, and operating all the mechanisms, you never get the chance to watch the show. Yes. I know that I'm no master playwright, but still, even if it really is a half-baked script, with shoddy writing and moments of sheer ridiculousness, I'd still like to see it for myself. Just once. Hard to turn a guy down after a speech like that. Thank you. Genuinely, I'm so grateful. I'll go and inform the others. Then, as soon as you're ready, the show can begin. <laughs> long, long ago. There was a great thief. He lived in a land where the light did not shine, where all suffered in the darkness. <clears throat> People call me. Sorry, Kaya. Directly into the microphone, please. Otherwise, your voice will, you know. Okay. <clears throat> they call me the Dagger Bandit, but no one sees that I rob the rich and give to the poor. Here in the dark, Evildoers run rampant in the shadows, while the good, honest folk stumble blindly on, just trying to find a way through. As the bandit brooded, suddenly the world was inexplicably changed as a single star appeared on the horizon and flew across the sky. Traveler, stomp on that movement mechanism in front of you. Light. A brief flash, yet enough to illuminate the world. If I can find the source of that light, I can shine it into the darkness, and the people will suffer in blindness no longer. Without a moment to spare, he set off to follow the star's course. All the while, the star kept moving through the sky. Um, Traveler, 
the star kept moving through the sky. Looks like I have to go through the desert. This could get dangerous. If everything he'd heard was to be believed, the desert ahead was a no-man's land filled with horrors. Worse still, the star had landed in the most difficult to reach location, surrounded by sheer cliffs. But he was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. The Dagger Bandit trekked deep into the desert wasteland. Yet when he finally arrived at his destination, he found not a fallen star, but a young girl, dressed in white. How strange. I'm positive this is where the star landed. Young lady, do you know where the light has gone? The girl replied, Traveler from afar, the light you seek is only a bottled flame. But the flame has now died, and its light is long gone. A uh, bottled flame? Yes, it was a gift from another. And so, the girl began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The girl hailed from a kingdom that sat atop the waterfalls. But when the reigning dynasty fell and a new one seized power, she and her people fled for their lives. A thick fog began to fill the air as she made her way through the forest, and dense thickets tried to block her path. There is a mechanism down there that you can press to retract the thicket board below the stage. to guide me through this wretched forest, then I could survive. With scratches covering her arms and legs, the girl pressed through the pain and made her way forward. The road ahead was arduous, but she was determined to press onward. I've come this far, and I'm not about to turn back now. But, just as she was drawing near her destination, a huge stretch of thorns and brambles suddenly came into view. Despair set in and began to weigh on her heart. If only someone could help me, I would give anything in return. The girl's heartfelt wish in her moment of desperation did not go unheard. Wait, wait, wait! There's no mechanism for the final thicket! Ugh, I must have forgotten to check those boards. According to the story, those thickets should be gone from the stage now, right? Yes, total oversight on my part. Ugh, what a pain. I can help! Traveler, catch! Ah, it's a jumpy dog! The girl's heartfelt wish did not go unheard, for a Jumpy Dumpty, who was passing by, helped to clear a path for her. Oh, thank you, Jumpy Dumpty. And so the girl continued her journey deeper into the forest. But what she found there was not a lamp, but a mage glowing with fire. So, just to clarify, it was supposed to be the mage who helped burn a path through the thicket. <laughs> Save it for the end, man! 
the mage took pity on the girl and handed her a bottle. Then the mage began to tell the story of how the bottle came into her possession. The fiery mage had an adventurous spirit and enjoyed taking long journeys. On one such journey, while taking rest in an oasis, she found a beautiful bottle by a crescent-shaped lake. Clee, quick, get in the light. She was an extraordinary mage with the power to grant people their wishes. She turned the bottle into a thing of equally extraordinary power. But the only place that it could make wishes come true was inside of the bottle. Oh, me! Oh, my! Look at this wonderful bottle of mine! It could make a fine toy. But better still, a sojourner's home. The fiery mage blew into the bottle, allowing it to grant one single wish outside its glass walls. Oh, am I supposed to blow into it? Wow, it lit up! A flame was kindled within the bottle, and it began to glow a fiery red, just like the mage herself. After the mage finished telling her story, she disappeared, leaving only the bottle behind. A magic bottle that can grant wishes. And I wish to leave this place and go somewhere where no one will ever find me again. And then, the bottle seemed to softly inquire. I don't know. The flame in the bottle faded as the girl's single wish was granted, and she found herself in the middle of the desert, far away, where no one could ever find her. When the dagger bandit listened to her story, he sighed in disappointment that the flame with the power to grant wishes outside of the bottle had already died. But this doesn't make sense. If it truly granted my wish, then nobody should have been able to find me here. Maybe they shouldn't. The desert is difficult and dangerous to navigate. But I was determined to make it, no matter what. Then take this bottle with you for your trouble. It may be able to grant you your wish. Though sadly, only within the confines of the bottle itself. All I wish for is light. Honoring the bandit's request, the girl wished for light inside the bottle. And sure enough, it lit up. They found that while the light was only generated within, it could nonetheless shine through the glass and reach anywhere in the outside world. Even though it doesn't burn as brilliantly as the light that shone before, this is still an extraordinary light. What will you do after I take the bottle? I don't know. Well, then maybe you should come back with me. With no reason to refuse, the girl accompanied the dagger bandit back to the land where the light did not shine. They brought light to that place, and the darkness was dispersed. And they lived happily ever after. Mr. Director? Huh. 
No one's ever called me that before. Thank you, my dear little mage. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so happy. Miss Dia says that she tailored it a little bit so it would fit me, but you were the one who designed and made it. Yeah, that's amazing! And it sounds like Adia did a great job, too! It was nothing, really. Just one of those, oh no, whatever shall I wear to the ball moments. Something comes in handy at times like that. Sewing is an art in its own right. You're more talented than you give yourself credit for, Idea. Really? Oh, uh, I... I'm just gonna go for a second. Please, check amongst yourselves. She gets embarrassed so easily. She really can't handle being in the spotlight. Idea's a sensitive person and doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence. I hope all the excitement hasn't brought her to tears. Oh, I'm a little worried. Don't worry. I'll go make sure she's okay. I'll see you... So, what did you all think of the play? Any thoughts? Huh? Uh-oh. Time to get serious. Now, are you sure you want to hear what we really think? Oh, absolutely! I had the courage to ask, didn't I? So, don't mince your words. Go ahead. Speak your mind. I can take it. Okay, time out will go first. So, the dialogue at the beginning was pretty good, but it ran out of steam as the story went on. Paimon could tell that he ran out of inspiration somewhere along the way. The characters were honestly a little bit ridiculous. Paimon didn't get what you were trying to do. The yes, all very good points, Paimon. I would add that in its attempt to pay tribute to the series A Thousand Nights, all semblance of a coherent was sacrificed. Plus, I do have to penalize you for the issues with the props. Miss Idea, what are you doing back here? Oh, you know, I return like the tide when people start discussing something important. Huh, especially when it has to do with criticizing my show. Mm-hmm, but there was one thing I liked about it. Just one, mind you. The story had a good ending. You think so? I thought I was letting him off lightly. Idea, could I borrow you for a moment? Oh, sure. Excuse me for a moment. Back to you, Paimon. Keep up the good criticism. Okay, in that case, Paimon did have one other complaint. Let's hear it. Taking criticism on the chin is all part of being a director. The ending was all wrong. The girls' motives were clear and simple the whole way through. It was kind of jarring when all she had to say was, I don't know. And doesn't anyone else find it weird how her whole community was on the run? But she was only looking out for herself the whole time? I'm fine. I'm not going to improve without feedback. I also learned a lot this time with the chance to be off stage. To be honest, it was a dream come true. What a great attitude. You don't seem upset at all by our comments. I wouldn't say I'm completely unaffected, but you're only speaking the truth. They're all very valid points. Still... Now that Paimon thinks about it, you did finish the script in a bit of a rush. Hmm. Maybe we are being a little too hard on you. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Nothing is as important to me as my work on the stage. We all use our imaginations when we're kids, right? I used to play with dolls and my own cardboard cutouts by the light of an oil lamp. The shadows would come to life and dance on the walls. I never got tired of it. Fast forward to now, and in many ways, I'm still that same little kid. Lying on his bed, making sound effects. And I get the same joy from running a show now, as I did in my little bedroom theater. Of course, a director can accomplish nothing without a cast and crew. So on that note, I want you to all know that I am eternally grateful to each and every one of you. Hey, don't mention it! We had a blast! 
<laughs> okay. Here, take this. Your component, as promised. It's the bottle from the show! The one that lit up when I blew into it! That's right! Can you guess the secret behind why it lights up? Um... Oh, maybe there's an invisible fairy inside that opens its eyes when you blow into it! Uh... uh bingo! You guessed it! That should do the trick. Oh, wait, this needs tightening up a little. Hold on, this will only take a second. Hmm. This outfit's more fashionable than I imagined. Excuse me, everyone. Do you have a moment? Especially you, Zosimos. Itia wants to do a little something for you. <laughs> she says it'll be a dream come true. A dream come true? Yes. She said that as useless as she is, she wants to do something for you as the first person to have heard of your dream of being a director. Her words. Not mine. I have to disagree, though. I have never thought of Idea as a useless person. How is this suddenly about me? If everybody is ready, then I'd like to invite tonight's male lead to take the stage! Ta-da! Um, how is me changing outfits supposed to make the director's day? It's just a prototype costume. Is he that easy to please? Don't be silly. If I know our director, nothing will make him happier than to see his ideas brought to life by the right actor. <laughs> well, then I'm happy to oblige. Who am I to argue with the star of the show? Zosimos drew up countless designs and made a few prototypes before landing on this one. It just needed some tailoring to fit properly, so I made a few stitches here and there. I hope the result isn't a disappointment. Oh, it's perfect. Idea, I... I'm... Oh, <laughs> I'm so touched. Thank you all. You've made me happier than I ever thought I could be. How are you doing? Recovered? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you again, Idia. Oh, please, don't mention it. Well, now that we have the final component, it's time to say goodbye for now. Let's head to the core of the Valuria Mirage and get this place fixed up. Can I keep wearing my costume? Please do, by all means. Both of you can keep your costumes. It seems only fair. Kaya, keep wearing yours, too. It looks amazing. <laughs> I agree with our mage. I'm sure it's not every day you get to play such an unforgettable character. Sure. I think I can be a bandit for a little longer. Bye-bye, Mr. Director. Take care, my dear friends.
Idea had the water droplet send us a message just as the show was coming to an end. So we came back here to wait for you. How is Lessig doing? He finished all the maintenance work, but it took a lot out of him. He's now fast asleep in his room. Oh, I feel a little guilty. <laughs> Consider it his atonement. It's only fair that he had to do something constructive before being able to sleep soundly. Seriously, don't waste your concern on him. If you say so. Okay, without further ado, let's go and fix the domain! Isn't this where we first met Water Droplet? Correct! The core of the Valerian Mirage is the largest streaming projector of all. And this domain is one gigantic preprint. Whoa, so everything we've seen is created by this? That's incredible! So, to fix it, same process as usual, right? Do we need to use the preprint? Exactly! Well done! <laughs> you catch on quick! It's hard to forget after doing it so many times now. Let's get going! <gasps> this is the final step! Yay! Suddenly Paimon's really excited! The hub consists of these components. All you need to do is place them onto the foundation in the right shape. The right sh we did it! But why isn't it turning? The components are back in the core, and the hub is restored to its proper shape again. <laughs> That's all we needed to do. Like any wound, it just needs time to heal. It'll probably just start turning again one day in the middle of the night when no one's looking. Really? I thought that with your special abilities, you could get it turning again right away. What? us are dying to see it. Not just how the domain looks when it's fixed, but also Idea and her element. I want to see Idea using her magic powers too. I bet they're super awesome. Uh, what are you guys talking about? And how is Cleon on this, but Paimon isn't? They're referring to our mascot's true form. As I've said all along, there's much more to Idea than she gives herself credit for. She has a very special power. Though, I think some of us have sensed that already. Did you notice right away, General? I only found out when I was chatting with Eula. So our General was the first to notice. It seems like she's more perceptive than she lets on. I'd say the same about you, Kaya. What the... All of you? No? I mean, I, I wasn't trying to hide anything from you, I, I promise. It's just... For people who stumble upon this place by accident, I think my current form is more approachable than my true one. I... I don't want people to get scared when they see me. What? What is it? And whatever it is, how the heck does everyone know about it? Uh, well, for one thing, I sensed elemental energy in the residents here. But none of them had visions. Then my mind started to wander as I was reading a storybook. And suddenly, I had a thought. Since hydro idolins can change into any form, why not human form? You hit the nail on the head. All right. In that case, please allow me to introduce myself once more. I am an Oceanid who was exiled here when the former Hydro Archon passed away. My name is Adia. Wow, Adia! You're so pretty. <laughs> now that I'm in my true form, I suddenly feel a little embarrassed talking to you all. You look stunning. You should be flaunting this look at every opportunity. So does this mean that all the people we met in here are actually... 
I'm guessing that the human counterparts to these Hydro Alter Egos are long gone. That's right. When they wanted to leave, I took them to the edge of the desert. The components are, in fact, gifts that they gave to me before they left. But I'm always curious about what brings people here. So I used the streaming projector to bring their wishes to life. The power to grant wishes, but only within the confines of the bottle. Exactly. It's a truly extraordinary light. I just realized something. When the components fell from the core, it appeared as if they had returned to their respective owners. But actually, it was after the components landed where they did that their owners and the things associated with them arose around them to form the different zones. So now that the components have been retrieved, does that mean that all those things are gone? Don't worry, they'll be quite safe. As long as I remember them, they'll never disappear. However much we might criticize each other or get into scuffles, in this mirage, they will always be my friends. I had so much fun in the choo-choo car and hanging out with Mr. Director. I'll never forget them either. Me neither. I'll always remember my adventures in this fantasy land. <laughs> Very good. But it's probably time I set this wheel in motion. This one's all yours, Adia. Our magical mascot. Idea. Yes, General Sangonomiya? I'm all ears! If it's okay with you, would you let me borrow the Shinro casket from the Domain's core? Ah, the Shinro casket. That sounds familiar. One second. Here! Is this it? Wow! A huge shell! It's the relic that Kokomi mentioned earlier! So this is where it's been hiding! It was once a ritual vessel used for making offerings in the Molun Shrine. It's made from the remains of a yokai called the Shinkiro, and it can listen to the wishes of those who come to pray to build up Shinki, which gives it its power. Several centuries ago, the relic was lost when the last prefect of Yashiori died in battle. Its final resting place was unknown. The pearl that goes with it should be able to sense the casket's location. But when, unbeknownst to anyone at the time, the casket disappeared inside the core of the Valyrian Mirage, the pearl's light died out. Huh? How come? Well, imagine it was a sound instead of light. If the room is too big, you can't hear anything from outside the door, can you? Get it now. The shell must have been having too much fun one day and got locked in the solitary confinement room. I understand now, too. The core has been wearing out recently. That's why you were able to follow the pearl all the way here. To get back to the story, without the offerings at the shrine, 
this vessel quickly loses its power. Yet countless people who have visited this domain brought their wishes with them and left a small piece of themselves behind along with their gifts. These have the same effect as the offerings at the shrine. Wow! I never knew this thing was so powerful! This! Powerful enough to help you repair the Valyria Mirage with any luck. But... what do I do with it? It's simple. We just need to awaken it by telling it what we wish for. For example... My name is Sangonomiya Kokomi, the Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island. And my wish is to use my critical thinking and strategic planning skills to bring a little more joy into the lives of my fellow Watatsumi Islanders, as well as the lives of everyone I cherish. Itia, what do you wish for? Me? I... My wish is that all those who have sojourned to the Valurian Mirage in the past will achieve what they truly wish for, not just in this domain, but out there, too. Even though I know full well that trying to build a railway in the outside world is just a pipe dream, and that Maimuna will probably just go back to being a scholar. And I know that Zosimos has a lot of improving to do as a playwright. It's going to be tough for him back in Fontaine. Chasing your dreams is hard work. Despite all of that, I still hope... Somehow, someday, they will achieve their dreams. and dreams is at your disposal. Everyone's praise and curious questions went to my head. I said so many things I'm so ashamed of, and I... I lost the courage to live on. Please don't say that. Yours was a noble wish. Yeah, and you weren't granting wishes for yourself. You did it for other people. I have friends like that, too. Other people's hopes and dreams are what motivate them. 
go work tirelessly just to see them smile. If you ask me, that's one of the most noble things a person can aspire to. Please, no more praise. I, I'm really not comfortable with it. It makes me feel so ashamed. Someone like me doesn't deserve so many people's praise. It's like I'm dreaming. Well, at least the domain is fixed now, and all the components are back in place. Mm. What's the matter, Klee? I suddenly have loads and loads of more wishes! I want to ride the choo-choo car again and look down from up on top of the big wheel! Is there a way to get up on top of the wheel, Idea? There is a way, but there's only space for a very few people. That's okay. I can go up by myself. Um, but it'd be more fun with Mr. Honorary Knight. Are we sure about this? It's so high. What happens if we fall off? Well, yeah, but... Paimon's just worried for you. Don't worry. I'll be there to make sure no one falls off. I haven't been up there in a long time myself. up here <laughs> sure thing whenever people have to leave this domain I like to come up here and spend some time alone after I've seen them out. They're always overjoyed when they first arrive and start bringing their imaginations to life. But once they realize that they can't take anything home with them, they get upset. Some of them can't bear to leave. Others regret ever setting foot in this place. Do you ever get sad, Idea? I feel lonely at times, but not sad. A lot of people destroy everything they created before leaving, but some don't, like the residents you met. Before they left, they asked me to make replicas of themselves using Hydro Eidolons. Then they tasked these replicas with maintaining everything they built here, as if this was their way of keeping their dreams alive. That's beautiful. Yeah. I don't know how they're faring in the outside world, but just the thought that one day they might achieve their dreams and live on the outside just as their counterparts do in here, that's enough to make me happy. It feels like I'm here waiting for them in the future, where they've achieved everything they wanted. Uh, really? I just think 
believe that every dream, every wish, is like a flame in a bottle. Whether someone is still working towards their dream or living it already, as long as whenever they think back to that spark of light within them, it still makes them smile fondly. That's all it takes. Well, I feel super happy right now. <laughs> then I guess I finally paid Alice back after all these years. Funny to think I've been in the middle of a desert this whole time. It's just a giant muddy swamp to me. Time for Paimon to give you a nickname! <gasps> Mudberry! Watch out for Idea the Mudberry! How dare you mock me! Roar! I'll gobble you up in one mouthful! <laughs> I'm still embarrassed to have shown you my uglier side. But I'm glad the Valarium Mirage is up and running again. This place is going to be bustling with activity again soon enough. I hope you'll take some time to enjoy yourselves. Yep! I want to get everyone together for one last ride on the choo-choo cart! <laughs>